Jeff Flitner, meteorologist and uh, director of operation, flood, hydrologic operations for the Harris County Flood Control District. And today we're going to talk about flooding in Harris County and across the region uh, here in Southeast Texas. And so a lot of a lot of what I say, even though it may be focused somewhat on Harris County, can be applied to the surrounding counties um, because there's not a lot of difference sometimes between what happens in, in Harris County and in Fort Bend or, or Brazoria or Galveston County. So if you've lived here for a while, you've been through some really significant rainfalls. So, you know, kind of five really significant rainfalls in the last 40 years or so, starting in 1979 with Tropical Storm Claudette, about 43 inches of rain in, in 24 hours down in Alvin in Bazoria County. And if you take that, that's kind of all the rainfall we had uh, during Harvey, and you put that all in a 24-hour, one-day period. So a significant amount of rainfall in a short period of time. And then we had Tropical Storm Allison in, in June of 2001. You know, before Harvey, Allison was our was our benchmark flood kind of in this area and, and especially in Harris County. And the, uh, you know, damage is 73,000 homes flooded uh, just in Harris County alone, about 80,000 across the state of Texas um, and, and very significant rainfalls over a multiple day period, three separate actual flooding events with Tropical Storm Allison. And then we had the tax day storm in 2016. This was not a tropical system. This was just heavy rainfall along a, a very slow moving frontal boundary, two feet of rain in southern Waller County, uh, just northwest of Katy. Uh, Harvey in 2017, you know, widespread significant flooding, uh, catastrophic flooding across all of southeast Texas. And then only two years later, Tropical Storm Imelda uh, back in 2019, uh, again, very heavy rains in the Beaumont Port Arthur area, uh, 31 inches in about 12 hours. And even here in Harris County, uh, about uh, 30 inches over a 48 hour period, and very significant flooding from Jefferson over to Liberty and Chambers. And this was kind of really eastern and northeastern uh, Harris County uh, dealing with Imelda. And so when you look at the top five wettest tropical systems uh, in the state of Texas in our history, you can see uh, here they kind of line up. Harvey there, 60 inches of rain over in, in the Beaumont Port Arthur area. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Amelda, Fannett, Texas is over in the same location and so is Allison the, for the wettest uh, portions of those storms. So unfortunately, Jefferson County has really been an area uh, that has been impacted significantly uh, since about 2000. Um, the only storm here not in southeast Texas, Harvey, southeast Texas, Claudette was down in Brazoria County, and the other two there, um, you know, in southeast Texas also is, is uh, Tropical Storm Amelia in Medina, Texas. That's kind of southwest of San Antonio, 48 inches back in 1978. And interestingly enough, we had back-to-back -back really significant uh, big floods here in Texas, Amelia and Claudette, back-to-back um, -back years. Um, just kind of different parts of the state. So we can certainly get some very heavy rainfalls from tropical systems. And you can see when you spread this out over the entire nation, the Gulf Coast and the Eastern Seaboard, these are the top 10 wettest tropical systems in U.S. history. Harvey there obviously at the top. But what's interesting is six out of 10 of the top 10 are in the state of Texas. And so we're, we're accustomed here in the western Gulf of Mexico to getting slow moving tropical systems that can really produce a lot of rainfall, especially uh, as they move inland and, and kind of slow down um, uh, over portions of the state. And so you can get some really big rains. One other thing to, to mention about all of this is we focused a lot on uh, tropical systems, tropical storms and hurricanes. First, you don't have to have a tropical storm or a hurricane to produce flooding. We can get significant amounts of flooding uh, outside of hurricane season in April and May and also in October and November um, that have absolutely nothing to do with tropical storms and hurricanes. And the other thing to keep in mind is not every tropical storm or hurricane is going to produce flooding. We've certainly had a lot in our history that have not produced uh, any flooding in our area. So you just have to kind of pay attention to the forecast and the impacts for each tropical system because each one is different. All right, now we're going to move away from kind of what we've been through in our history and go into watersheds. And a, and a watershed is just simply a, a drainage area. And anytime rain falls in that drainage area, 
uh, it runs to that particular creek or bayou or river. And so these are the, the major watersheds that drain uh, the southeastern portion, that drain into the southeastern portion of Texas. So we have the Trinity River that kind of flanks us to the east and comes down from Lake Livingston into the Liberty County, Liberty area, and eventually goes out into Trinity Bay and Galveston Bay. So this brings water down from the Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, area all the way up almost to the Red River. So when you get really heavy rains up in North Texas, you can get flooding further down on the Trinity River. None of that water affects us here in Harris County. So just because you're seeing heavy rain up to our north doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have flooding in Harris County. Uh, same thing with the Brazos River and the Colorado Rivers, uh, very large basin spanning the entire state of Texas. Uh, the Brazos kind of winds its way down through Waco, College Station, Hempstead. Um, the county line between Waller and Washington County, Fort Bend County there in the Sugarland area, and then down into Brazoria County. Again, no Brazos River water affects us directly here in Harris County, but certainly if you're out in Waller and Fort Bend and Brazoria counties, um, you know, that tends to be some of your biggest source of flooding. Uh, in those areas is when you have a, a significant rainfall over a big area of the Brazos Basin, um, you can have significant flooding out there. And then the Colorado River a little bit further to the south and west, uh, kind of draining from the Austin area down through Columbus uh, and eventually down to Bay City. And so these are kind of the watersheds across southeast Texas. And again, to emphasize just because you have rain in, in Waco, or Austin or San Antonio or Dallas, Fort Worth, or even College Station, that doesn't mean that water is coming to us here in Houston uh, or Harris County. You can see these watersheds drain kind of around Harris County. So we're gonna kind of zoom in here and look at the at kind of the regional aspects of where our local watersheds are. So you can see we're, we fall within what we call the San Jacinto River Basin Watershed. And that extends up to about the Huntsville area and then a little bit to the east and a little bit to the west. So we're very fortunate, um, you know, in Harris County and Montgomery counties that we don't get water from other parts of the state like we just talked about. So we don't get big river floods here like you do on the Ohio or the Mississippi River. Uh, all of our flooding really comes from what falls directly on top of us. And then we take the San Jacinto River Basin and we break it down into the 22 watersheds. Uh, that make up Harris County. And let me take the, the arrows off for a second here so you can see the names of these watersheds and kind of figure out where you might live within these watersheds and kind of look at their names. Because when we talk about flooding, we talk about White Oak Bayou and Greens Bayou and Sims Bayou and Spring Creek. And so you have to kind of know uh, what watershed you live in. But it's also important to know how the water drains through those watersheds. So where do you live in that watershed? And pretty much in Harris County, all of our water drains from west to east, not really from north to south, like a lot of folks think. So it's west to east. So heavy rain, when heavy rain falls out in Tomball and Magnolia and Hockley, that water actually goes down Cypress and Spring Creek and ends up in the West Fork of the San Jacinto River over at Umble and Kingwood. It, it doesn't come down through downtown Houston um, and through the Houston Ship Channel. It goes through the San Jacinto River and eventually out into Galveston Bay through the San Jacinto River. So it's it's really kind of important to understand um, all the different watersheds across the county and, and how they and how they drain. And you can get this map at the uh, Harris County Flood Control District's website, hcfcd.org, if you want to uh, play around with it. And we also have specific watershed maps for each watershed. Of course, the thing, watersheds are one thing. But I, what I hear so much talk about is the floodplains and really the question, am I in a floodplain or am I out of a floodplain? Um, but, but just to be clear, floodplains are a risk map. They determine how much residents are going to pay for flood insurance. They don't necessarily convey the entire risk of flooding that an, a, an area or a region faces. And this is true for not only Harris County, but all the surrounding counties in this area, because we're all we're all very similar. We all have similar topography. We're, re we're relatively flat here and we all get really intense rainfalls. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this. But one of the one of the key things to get across is that red statement at the bottom. Everybody has a flood risk. Some of us have a higher flood risk. Some of us have a lower flood risk. 
but every single one of us has a flood risk. And just because you have never flooded before, or just because you only flooded during Harvey, or just because you don't live in a floodplain, does not mean you can't flood in the future. And I, and I really want that to sink in because we do have a lot of areas that are technically outside the floodplain uh, that flood. And the reason being is because these floodplains are only from our creeks and bayous. So this only shows flooding from creeks and bayous. But we get lots of flooding from this. And this is not unique to Harris County. This happens in other locations, you know, Beaumont, Port Arthur, Lake Charles, Baton Rouge, uh, Fort Bend County, Sugar Land, Galveston, Galveston Island. You get this type of flooding and it doesn't have to be near a creek or a bayou. And simply what happens is the roadway systems in, in this area, we design as part of the drainage system. Since we get really, really heavy rainfalls, three, four, five, maybe even six inches an hour, we know that the underground drainage system or the roadside ditch is not going to be able to completely convey all of that water or move all of that water uh, in that short period of time. You just, it's just too much volume of water falling from the sky to move it through the systems that quickly. And so we purposely build our streets below grade to help store that water until those underground systems can catch up. Uh, what happens though, is that when that rainfall rate continues for maybe a little bit longer than an hour or several hours, uh, the streets are going to fill up completely and the water is going to get up close, if not into some of the homes. And this tends to be very shallow flooding, um, but any water in a structure is damaging. And this also tends to be in areas that are not in mapped floodplains. And so most of these areas are not required to have uh, any sort of flood insurance. And this is why we stress for everybody to have flood insurance and, and to make sure you have those policies in place. Remember, it takes 30 days for those policies to go into effect. Uh, and homeowners insurance does not cover uh, flood damages. And here's an example of what I'm talking about. This is, you know, what this is the schematic and this is a picture of what this looks like in real life. And this is in the Spring Branch area, just north of I-10. Really heavy rainfall, about four and a half inches here in an hour. The streets just simply filled up because the underground system could not keep up with the rainfall rate. And you can see in some cases here, first you have the street flooding and you have vehicles uh, stuck in the streets. Of course, we always tell people to never drive into high water. Uh, you know, turn around, don't drown, because the end result is going to be potentially you're in a life-threatening situation, potentially putting first responders uh, in a life-threatening situation. But also, as you see there with that van, you're going to probably lose your car. And so just don't drive into the high water. But the other thing to see here is, is you can notice that some of these homes, the water is getting very close to the homes. And this is the type of flooding that you can have 20 homes on a street and four or five will flood and the rest of the homes will not. And in, in, in this case, the elevation difference of only one or two inches makes the difference if you flood or not. Um, and so this is why we, we certainly ask everybody to have uh, flood insurance. The last thing I'd like to talk about is our flood warning system. So, you know, you, you, how do you know what's happening? Uh, you know, how do you know how high the creeks and bayous are getting? How do you know how much it's rained? Where, where is it flooding at? And this is all available to you, um, you know, either on your computer or even on your phone. We also have a mobile uh, website for this. And so this is our network of gauges that the Flood Control District has placed out across Harris County and the surrounding counties, well all the way up into Montgomery County, Waller, Fort Bend, Brazoria, Galveston, and even a little bit into Liberty County. And so this is becoming an increasingly regional uh, type network uh, over time. And we have about 280 uh, gauges now out uh, in, in, in these different areas and they record rainfall and they also record the level of the creek and the bayou. And so this is really important information and this is all in real time. So it is happening. Uh, you're getting this information delivered to the web, uh, website on a real time basis. And I put the web link down there, harriscountyfws.org. And you can see all of our various uh, gauges extending all the way from the coast down in Galveston, all the way up to uh, the Trinity River Authority to the north there around Lake Livingston. So spanning 
you know, a couple hundred miles, if you will, across our area. Uh, of course, the clustering of gauges in the urban area here in Harris County and then down into Fort Bend County. Um, and so this is, you can open the map and it starts as the rainfall section. So this is defaulted to the rainfall uh, over the last 30 days in this case, but a default to about the last 24 hours. So you can see the precipitation. And one of the neat things that we did um, after tropical storm or after Hurricane Harvey was we added this channel status map. And so this just gives you a snapshot in real time of, you know, where we're having issues on the creeks and the bayous. And so red is obviously bad. That's out of bank flooding. Green is good. Uh, the water still in the channel and, and yellow is near flooding or, or within a, a, a couple of feet of the of the bank of the channel. And so it kind of gives you an idea of where we're experiencing uh, flooding conditions um, from the creeks that are bio. So this is a snapshot of, of Harvey um, on uh, August 27th on the morning. And you can see, you know, pretty widespread flooding all across the entire county. And again, you can you can go back in time and also look at this. So we have this uh, archived historically back to about 2015. Um, and the other neat thing that we added after Harvey was near real-time inundation mapping. And one of the biggest things we heard uh, after the floods of 15, 16 and Harvey was, you know, I, I use your website and, and I see the, the elevation of the, of the, of the uh, water and the channel, but I don't know the elevation of my house or I don't know the elevation of my street. And so by providing the inundation mapping, we're doing the mathematical work in the background and so you don't necessarily need to know the elevation of your street or the elevation of your house. And so you can zoom in. So this is uh, a zoomed in view uh, on Cypress Creek and you can see our gauges here in red. And what we do is we just simply take that water surface elevation between these gauges and we want to run it through one of our hydrologic models and we create a map um, of the land that is being inundated based on the current elevation in the creek or the bayou. And so you can see the, the stream outlined there, very fine uh, where the center of the stream is. And you can see the extent of this blue here showing the uh, land areas near the creek, in this case, Cypress Creek, that is inundated with water from Cypress Creek. And so, you know, you can put your address in here. You can just zoom in on the map and kind of get a feel for, you know, this area is flooding, how close it is to you. You know, is it a street over? Is it six six streets away from you? And this updates about every 15 minutes, depending on the severity of the flooding. If, if we're if we're looking at widespread flooding across the entire county, it's a lot of data, a lot of points. It's going to take a little bit longer uh, with smaller floods and portions of the county and portions of the area. Uh, this will update about every 15 minutes. And so this is a really great tool, uh, a situational awareness tool to make you aware uh, of where we're having flooding and, uh, you know, kind of how close your particular property uh, is to the flooding, at least from the creek and bayou. And I, and I want to make sure we understand this is just creek and bayou flooding. This does not show the flooding from the rainfall rates that can potentially be happening from the streets, that ponding we talked about. And we're actually working on something right now uh, of using radar rainfall rates to try to develop a mapping tool that would uh, show where we could be having that street flooding and street ponding from the rainfall rates. But this particular map is just uh, from the creeks and the bayous. And lastly, you can uh, sign up for uh, notifications. So each one of these gauge locations, and you don't have to be in Harris County, you can be in Fort Bend, Sugar Land, Waller County, Montgomery County, you know, all the surrounding counties around us with gauges. Um, and you can go to fwsalerts.org and you have to create an account and then you can sign up for uh, alerts from these gauges. Uh, it can be rainfall alerts and enter rain in 15 minutes uh, or it can be water level alerts, how, how high the water level is getting the, in the creek or the bayou. And we have default um, we have default alarms that we have set, so you can just click them on, or you can go in there and uh, develop your own custom uh, alarm. So if you wanted to know how much it's rained in the last six hours, or if you want to know when the water in the bayou gets to half full, 
or when it gets to a certain level, you can go in there and set all of that up. You can have it sent to your uh, cell phone via text message, uh, or you can have it sent to your uh, uh, inbox uh, through, a, through an email. And, and this is great stuff because uh, you know you set it and then uh, it will tell you, the, the gauge and, and these um, alerts will tell you when you've triggered that level. And so you know it's especially important or useful at night you know when you might not be paying as much attention you can get this uh, stuff sent to your cell phone and so we certainly encourage everybody uh, to uh, you know sign up with these alerts and sign up with the various emergency management alerts from the city of houston harris county fort bend county galveston county all of the the counties in our region have their various um, alerting systems and now is the time right you know this time of year before we get into hurricane season to make sure that you're able to get information you know where to get information you know where to get trusted information and, and that's an, important because there's a lot of stuff out there especially on social media and you want to make sure that you're basing your decisions on factual trusted information and so make sure you go to the official sources the national weather service the national hurricane center uh, your local emergency management, your local officials. That's where you're going to get that trusted information uh, and trusted sources. And uh, lastly, if I haven't said it enough, flood insurance, again, it takes 30 days to go into effect. No policies are issued when there's a storm in the Gulf of Mexico, a named storm in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and again, homeowners insurance does not cover flood damages. So, you know, now is definitely the time uh, to get flood insurance. Only about 30% of the residents in Harris County have flood insurance. So there's a lot of you out there that don't have it. It's very important. Now's the time to get it. And with that, I think we covered a lot here today with all of the flooding aspects and where you can find information on rainfall and flooding. Uh, hopefully we don't have any uh, significant impacts here in Southeast Texas this hurricane season, but if we do, now is the time to get prepared for it. Thank you.